And because of our deep concern for everyone's spiritual and physical well-being, our Sunday School class has again this year decided to share a Reader's Theater version of the story of Palm Sunday. To start, travel back in time with us to about the year 30 AD. The dusty roads leading into, the, into Jerusalem were crowded with people, donkeys, and camels as the entire Jewish nation converged on the Holy Temple to celebrate the Passover. Remember that Jesus was Jewish, and being loyal to the scriptures, he too traveled to Jerusalem to celebrate the Passover. As Jesus and his disciples approached a nearby village, he too, he asked two of his disciples to go ahead of him. He directed them, when you get to the village, you will, you will see a, t a donkey tied up. Untie it and bring it to me. If anyone asks you why you are talking to the donkey, just tell them that just tell them the Lord needs it and he will needs it and he will bring it back as soon as he finishes with it. So the disciples went off and found the donkey. They united it and brought it to Jesus. As a sign of deep respect, the disciples laid their cloaks on the animal. Then Jesus and his disciples continued their journey toward Jerusalem. Some some people saw Jesus coming and ran toward him. They had heard he was coming and wanted to see him because they had heard the stories of his miraculous deeds, how he healed the sick, gave the sight to the blind, and even raised his friend Lazarus from the dead. So they went out to meet Jesus and welcome him as their long-awaited Messiah. Hosanna, Hosanna, the crowd cried. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. One by one, they laid their coats on the ground for the donkey to step on. The people who weren't wearing coats ran to the fields nearby to cut palm branches and laid them down. They knew that Jesus was special and welcomed them just like kings or courtiers, returning from the bad fields by scattering palm branches along their path or waving them in the air. All of this was quite disturbing to the Pharisees or Jewish religious leader. The Pharisees viewed Jesus as a threat to their position and authority. They said to Jesus, Tell these people to stop praising you as if you were a god. Jesus replied, If my people should become silent, even the rocks would then cry out in praise. Through this comment, Jesus was declaring to the Pharisees that the wonderful things people were saying about him were true, and that there was nothing they could do to stop it. The next day, Jesus and his disciples went to the Holy Temple to take part in special Passover ceremonies. Ever since he was a young boy, Jesus had been taught by his parents that the Temple of God in Jerusalem was a very holy place, and that at the Temple, everyone was supposed to be thinking about God. But don't picture the ancient Temple as you might expect of a quiet cathedral. An outdoor section was often used as a large market, loud and bustling with men selling animals for sacrifice, were sitting at tables loudly exchanging money. These noisy animals and loud money changers in themselves did not anger Jesus. The temple economy relied on both. Why? The reason the market was needed is that people were required to bring animals for sacrifice to the Passover celebration, and many didn't own any. The others lived so far away from Jerusalem, they couldn't bring any animals to the temple. So the people came to the temple and brought animals when they needed the merchants. The merchants did not accept the Roman currency. So the money changers were there to convert the people's unacceptable Roman currency into the accepted temple currency, the shekel. So these activities were not evil in themselves. They helped fill the big need. Then why was Jesus so angry at the merchants and money changers? 
Jesus was angry because these activities became occasions for temptation and sin. The merchants were charging the pilgrims extremely unfair prices for their animals. The money changers were practically robbing the people. Jesus was so filled with anger at these sinful conditions that he made a whip from rope and drove the men out selling pigeons, cattle, and sheep. He ran about, knocking over tables of the money changers and spilling their coins all over the ground. He told them all to leave. Get out of here. My house is a place of prayer, but you are turning it into a den of thieves. Seeing how the crowd of Jerusalem had the joyful celebrated and the arrival of Messiah into Jerusalem, and now watching as Jesus threw out the merchants and money changers, the verses of anger depended on further. These Jewish leaders felt their power and authority slipping away, and they began to plot a way to destroy Jesus. That plot unfolded during the rest of the week, Holy Week, the week celebrating their death, the life, death, resurrection of Jesus. The triumphant entry of Jesus into the city of Jerusalem has been celebrated since the first centuries of Christianity. The feast is referred to as Palm Sunday because the palm branches are blessed and disturbed among the faithful. Because of the cold weather in Ukraine, however, the palm trees cannot grow. For this reason, our Ukrainian ancestors introduced the custom of distributing willow branches, which even during early spring are budding and giving a sign of life. Thank you for listening to our Palm Sunday Reader's Theater presentation. We are grateful that you support the activities we're participating in as we acquire a deeper understanding and appreciation of our Ukrainian Catholic faith and heritage. Oh